everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Kitty Cat Gaming. We're back with another episode of A Mortician's Tale, and we are about to embalm, I mean not embalm, cremate a body with a pacemaker inside. So let's get to it. We just found out that our funeral home that we work for, a small family-run company, is being sold to a big company. And I'm worried about the changes that's going to bring on for us. So, Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker that we need to remove before a cremation. Because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot heat of the cremation machine, and we definitely don't want that. Let's start by removing Mr. Ray's pacemaker. Click and drag the scalpel over the heart to make an incision. That's not where your heart is, but okay. You can see the pacemaker. Click on the forceps to click and drag the pacemaker out of the heart. That's it. Click on the round identification tag and place it inside the coffin. Done. Great, Mr. Ray's is set to be cremated now. Easy peasy. Turn on the machine. And there he goes. Bye, Mr. Ray's. <laughs> That's Reaper's real name, right? From Overwatch? <laughs> oh, okay. So now we have the urn, and we're gonna intern the ashes. So we need to use a cremulator, start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Bone fragments go in here. Oops. <laughs> really? Oh, that's cool. They programmed it. Oh, oh, I got both at the same time. All right. You don't gotta tell me twice, I remember how to do it. All done, Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside flowers, time to attend the funeral. Let's see what this crowd's like, hopefully they're cool, right? We haven't had a really bad group yet, so... Uh, whew. this lady looks sad. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know. He never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. Aw, that's sad. What about you guys? Do you guys like him? What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change to go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? Wow, they don't care. Disappointing. I always told him I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me, so that figures. That's sad. This guy uh didn't take care of his loved ones, it seems. Let's see what these guys are saying. They're whispering to each other on the couch. Do you ever end up cleaning the air, clearing the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it, stubborn. Aw, unresolved feelings. You guys, call up your loved ones right now and tell them you love them. <laughs> you never know. Like, all the time, I hear about people who lost, like, a loved one and they're upset they couldn't say goodbye, you know? Because, like, you could get hit by a truck tomorrow. You never know. So, be nice to people. Uh, we got a new email. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank you for the service from my and mother. Oh, this is from another person. Uh, they said, hi, Amy. I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month and apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. That's sad. Uh, ooh, we had to see if we're comfortable with this one. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to... Con you wouldn't have to confront the situation yet anyways, they're never easy. Rose and Daughters has been asked to repair the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for a cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. What the fuck? Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any other witnesses to sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes. So his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew is, has graciously offered to take this on if you are uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, of ha instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is a suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know. I'm here if you need me. Our son... Just to guard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial, he was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he wanted. Proceed with as an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. They spelled check weird. Man. That's not cool. Uh, you hate mushrooms so much, I found the perfect thing for you. I've been thinking about death. I know. Shocker. Look what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it. I'm writing you on my phone, so I don't feel like Googling it right now. 
Anyways, the idea is that it's a biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call a biomix, i.e. mushrooms and other microorganisms that help decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil and plants. Uh, I think this one company even offers casket liners for using green caskets. That's so cool! Oh my god, I want that! Uh, maybe... I'm, but I'm being cremated, so... <laughs> I think this is what I want. It'll be just like Hannibal. Oh yeah, there's an episode of Hannibal where, like, they turn bodies into mushroom farms. Oh my god, if you haven't seen that show, it's super dark. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Love you. Think about this. Let me know. May you, uh, let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe we'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably gonna do this. There's no harm in planning ahead. Am I right? That's pretty cool. Uh, things to avoid at a funeral. Welcome back. Now we really do listicles here, but for this monthly newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to deliver this month's advice. What not to say at a funeral. We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, and since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comfortable to other people. But, unfor but fortunately, we can deliver a little bit of solid advice on what to not say to someone who's grieving. So here it is, Funeral Monthly's top five things to not say at a funeral. <laughs> Rule number one. At least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this. It's probably not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best? Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk and just don't say this. Yes. Well, number two. Were they saved? Ugh. No religious statements. Just don't. Why? Because not everybody agrees with your religious views. And not only, um, and not only is not always comforting, it can also be insulting. Rule number three, they're with the angels now. See above note, then rinse and repeat. Yes. Rule number four, let me know how I can help. What, really? This one is tricky. You want to help, but those in mourning don't always want to ask for help. If you want to help, suggest specific things. For example, I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them, take them to their favorite restaurant, or buy tickets to see a movie together. That's so true. Good one. And rule number five, I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus on this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can be applied in any situation, don't say stuff for the sake of saying stuff. Just say, I'm sorry if you don't know what else to say. Very good. All right. So... I am, they're basically just asking if I'm comfortable working on a body of someone who had committed suicide. And yes, I'm comfortable with working on this. So let's check him out. It sucks that his family doesn't want to follow his wishes. That's dumb. But they're the ones who want to visit him, so... I guess I can understand their reasoning, but I don't agree with it. The deceased family have asked for an open casket funeral, which means the body will need to prepare it and embalm. Let's start by cleaning the body. That's sad. At least they don't show how he did it, right? Like he doesn't have like cut marks on him or anything. Okay. Uh, break rigor mortis. I'm playing this with a mouse on my lap right now. <laughs> so sorry if I'm not like super straight with it. Click and drag the glue on each eyeball to shut it. There we go. We can drag cotton balls into the mouth to give it its shape. So it shut. Right, and then click and drag lotion over the body to moisturize it. Moisturize my baby. Oop. Okay. Uh, perfect. Prepare for embalming. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. Prepare for embalming. All right. So next we are going to use the tubing to get the blood out. We're gonna get the cannula, put it in the artery. Then we're gonna connect that to the embalming machine. And we're gonna turn the embalming machine on. Wait, this is like second nature now, guys. We're doing great. Um, and then we gotta massage the body to distribute the chemicals that are gonna leach into the ground and into the water stream and give people cancer. Good. Always make a will, guys. 
I think like the age that you should make a will is like in your 20s, right? Like that's the age they recommend you make a will. And surprisingly, it's expensive as fuck to make a will. I think it's like $3,000. I haven't done it because I'm married and Aaron knows my wishes, but uh, you have to like contact a lawyer to like draw up a will for you. So I'm sure there's cheaper ways to do it. There's gotta be. I, I just heard that from one of my friends. You can also just like write a will and then mail it to yourself so it's dated and stamped and sealed and then just leave it somewhere for someone to find like in a lockbox or something. Uh, click and drag the needle over the incision to close the incision. Oops, that's a scalpel. <laughs> uh, and now we're gonna use the trocar to get all of the fluid out of the organs that might have been left over. Look at us, we're a pro at this now. He looks so peaceful. All done, Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. It's time to offend the, attend the funeral. Follow the arrow to the funeral parlor. All right, let's go check it out. Hopefully everybody's happy. I mean, I can't imagine they are. <laughs> Their friend committed suicide. Well, they weren't prepared for it at all. It's one of the harder funerals to deal with. I still can't believe he did it. I feel... I, I feel like I should have known, you know, been able to do something to stop it. There was no way to know. You can't blame yourself. He wouldn't have wanted that. I know, I know. It just, it hurts. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, I heard this wasn't going to be an open casket. I'm surprised it's public. Usually funerals for these, these circumstances are more private. What the fuck? Anyone can have a funeral. I wish we were closer. Wow, holy shit, I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother. I should have paid more, played more games with him when he asked. Shit, I... Aww. Quietly sobs. Aww. Yeah, you know... I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I feel like a lot of times, not all times, most of the time, suicide is a long-term solution to a short-term problem. Um, and if you are feeling any feelings of, like, suicidal urges, to please reach out. Um, the crisis text line is online for free. Like, there's so many services online for people you can talk to and deal with these issues. I highly recommend them. Please get help. Um, so next time on the next episode of Kitty Cat Gaming, we are gonna uh, embalm our next body. We'll see what it entails. Be sure to that subscribe button so you guys don't miss it, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody!